first step in testing a backflow prevention device is to identify the device. There are three testable devices, so it's important to identify the device that you are working on. This is a reduced pressure principle backflow preventer device, also known as an RPZ. It has two check valves, check valve number one, check valve number two, and it has a relief valve. The next step is to determine direction of flow. We always test in the direction of flow from the inlet to the outlet. Note the direction of flow by the arrow on the device. The next step is to number our test cocks. Test cock number one, two, three, and four in the direction of flow. Test cock number one is located on the upstream side of the upstream shutoff valve. Another way of looking at it is the arrow points to test cock number four. Next step is to install the adapters. This is the adapter for this device. After installing the adapter, you need to flush the test cocks to remove any debris from the test cocks and also to eliminate the possibility of introducing any debris or foreign material into your test kit. You want to open up test cock number four first to create a flow through this device. As water is flowing through this device, the relief valve will not open. Open test cock number three and continue to allow it to flow. Test cock number two. Test cock number one. Close test cock number one. Two, three, and four. By bleeding this way, you will prevent any premature discharge from the relief valve. The next step in testing a reduced pressure zone backflow prevention device is to shut down the downstream shutoff valve. After shutting down the downstream shutoff valve, you should observe to see if there's any water discharging out of the relief valve. If water is discharging out of the relief valve, that's an indication that the first check valve is not holding tight and the test is over. No water is discharging out of the relief valve. The first check valve is considered tight and you can continue on with the test. To measure for back pressure, connect a standard PSI gauge to test cock number one and record the reading. Next, remove the pressure gauge from test cock number one and connect it to test cock number four. Record the PSI reading. If the pressure reading on test cock number one is higher than the pressure reading on test cock number four, continue with the test. If the pressure reading on test cock number one is lower than the pressure reading on test cock number four, the downstream shutoff valve is leaking with back pressure. Resolve the back pressure condition before continuing with the test. In testing this backflow prevention device, we are going to test the first check valve differential pressure. We are going to test the second check valve for tightness against back pressure and differential pressure. And we're going to test the opening point of the relief valve. All tests are done under a no flow condition. To test this backflow prevention device, we will use a three valve differential test kit. This test kit measures differential pressure and reads from 0 to 15 PSID. At the start of the test, the high control valve is closed, the low control valve is closed, and the vent control valve is open. To measure the differential pressure across the first check valve, we need to take the high hose and connect it to test cock number two.
The vent hose should be in the bucket. Open test cock number two. Take the low hose connected to test cock number three. Open test cock number three. After opening up the test cocks, bleed the air out of the test kit by opening the high control valve and then closing the high control valve. By opening the low control valve and then closing the low control valve. Take your differential pressure reading. It should be 5 or greater. Test the second check valve for tightness, we want to back pressure the second check valve. We want to bring water from test cock number two to test cock number four. To do so, take the vent holes, bleed out the air by opening up the low side. Connect the vent holes to test cock number four. Open test cock number four. To introduce water into test cock number four from test cock number two, we need to open up the high control valve. With the high control valve open, water is now flowing from test cock number two up and around through the vent hose to test cock number four. Observe the relief valve port. If there's no discharge out of the relief valve, that's indicating that the second check valve is holding tight under a back pressure condition. All tests are done under no flow condition. This is not a test for the downstream cutoff valve. It is a test to determine whether this device is in a no flow condition. To determine that this device is in a no flow condition, we need to stop the flow of water to our test kit with the vent hose connected to test cock number four and the high side connected to test cock number two. Water is now flowing from test cock number two to test cock number four through our test kit. We need to stop the flow of water to our test kit. The high side control hose is connected to the bottom side of that test kit. To stop the flow of water to our test kit, we need to close down test cock number two. Observe the gauge reading. The gauge should hold steady. With the high control valve open, supplying water to test cock number four, and the water shut off to the gauge, and the gauge holding steady, this is an indication that the device is in a no flow condition. To test the opening point of the relief valve, we need to introduce water into test cock number three. To do so, we need to open up test cock number two. After opening up test cock number two, we can now introduce water into test cock number three by opening up the low control valve. One quarter turn. Observe the relief valve vent port. When water starts to discharge from the vent port, take the gauge reading. The gauge is now reading the differential pressure opening point of the relief valve. It should be 2 PSID or greater. To test the differential pressure of the second check valve, close down test cocks and remove the hoses. Reorientate your control valves on your test kit. The high control valve is closed. The low control valve is closed and the vent is open. 
To measure the differential pressure across the second check valve, connect the high holes to test cock number three and open up the test cock. Connect the low holes to test cock number four and open up the test cock. Lead the air out of the test kit by opening the high control valve and then closing it, by opening the low control valve and then closing it. Take your differential pressure reading. Your differential pressure reading should be one or greater. This concludes the test of a reduced pressure zone backflow prevention device assembly. Remove the hoses, restore the device to service. To test the downstream shutoff valve for tightness, conduct a no-flow test of the device. Create a demand by opening a valve downstream of the device. Watch for any flow from the open valve and observe the test kit needle. If there is no flow and the test kit needle is holding steady, the downstream shutoff valve is considered tight. If there is a flow and the needle drops to zero, the downstream shutoff valve is considered leaking.